and welcome to my channel. My name is Rachel. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if it's not your first time here, thanks for coming back. So today, I'm going to be doing a kind of three videos in one situation. A get ready with me, a tag video, as well as testing a new product, the Patrick Ta New Blush and Highlighter Palette. So, uh, what you're looking at right now is not the look that I created because I actually did record this video a couple of days ago and my camera was not recording when I was doing the intro. So that's why I'm doing it right now. <laughs> so in the video, I do test out the new Patrick Ta blush and highlighter palette like I just said. This is what it looks like. And in the video, I actually use this shade and this shade, but today I am wearing this shade over here, this pink shade called Giving Flirty, which I thought was good. You're gonna be able to see all three shades. So this is Giving Flirty, this pink color. You're gonna have to stick around to see my thoughts on the other shades. I am gonna put a timestamp in the description box with this specific product being tested if you're only interested in this if you wanna skip through the get ready with me or the tag video part. So check the description box for the timestamps for that. And then I'm also going to be doing the makeup firsts tag. And this is created by Glitter Fallout, whose name is Linda here on YouTube. I will link her channel and her video down below. And she created a fun tag talking about firsts and makeup, like your first high-end product you remember using, your first time someone else did your makeup, kind of fun questions like that. So I thought it was fun. I also saw Heather Austin do this video where she did a get ready with me while she was doing the tag video. So I got it from her as well. I will link her video down below. All the other stuff that I'm using in this get ready with me, I really don't mention what I'm using. So it's all going to be listed down in the description box. I'll put also the tag video questions if you're interested in recreating this video. I hope I said everything that I said the first time. Oh, give this a thumbs up if you enjoy it. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to consider subscribing before you leave. Let's just get to it. I've already primed my eyes with the Urban Decay Primer Potion. And I'm actually gonna be using the Tiny Marvels palette from Sydney Grace and Mel Thompson. This is brand new to me. This is a subscriber gift. So thank you to Renee who sent this to me. So, so nice of a gift. I've always wanted to try Sydney Grace. I've always wanted to try this palette in particular. So I'm very excited to be doing a look with this. Of course, this is not new. So, you know, you've probably seen a million videos on this, but I really wanted to use it. It looks so stunningly gorgeous. I'm so excited. I'm first going to go in with the shade Tree Hopper right here is my transition shade. So the first question for the tag video is what first made you interested in makeup? So I think, you know, honestly, growing up in high school and stuff, I didn't wear that much makeup. I would wear makeup if I was going to like a school dance. On the daily though, I really don't remember wearing makeup very often. I think maybe like my senior year of high school, I, I started to dabble in makeup. And then even through college, I don't feel like I was really wearing makeup often except to go out to parties. I'm pretty sure on a daily basis, I mean, this was a long time ago, okay? It's hard for me to remember anything from that time. But I'm pretty sure I wasn't wearing makeup a lot. Now I have danced my whole life. I do teach ballroom dancing even now to this day. So I've danced for like 30 years at this point. And that I feel like is really how I got into makeup was having to put makeup on for performances, stage makeup, stuff like that. And I specifically remember when I graduated college and I started working for Fred Astaire, which is a franchised ballroom dance studio chain. That's where like the competitions I would go to, I would be putting on makeup. And I feel like that's really where I started getting into makeup more than just like very basic level. So that's probably where I would say I was getting into makeup was getting ready for competitions for dance. I'm gonna go into the shade Death Moth down here. Just put a little lower in my crease. It's a little off topic, but I am getting ready tonight. Now I said I teach ballroom dancing, but I'm also Central Florida's premier ballroom DJ, uh, self-proclaimed. So I live right outside of a very large, very large retirement community, um, very large. <laughs> There's almost 80,000 people that live here, if you can believe it. <laughs> they often have 
ballroom dances. And so I am contracted quite often to play the music for their dances. So I fully enjoy it. I love seeing how much the residents love my, my music. They just love my music. And I think I've mentioned this before, but I always kind of take the time to do my makeup and I get dressed up and look nice. And the residents also love seeing my makeup. <laughs> They're always like, oh my gosh, your makeup looks so beautiful. Um, I always get compliments. Yeah, I'm getting ready to go DJ a dance tonight. I'm very excited. The second question is, what was the first makeup you ever remember applying? This one I remember. I'm gonna go in with the shade Spider over here just on my outer corner. I remember for high school dances, the makeup I used to wear. I would literally take a white pencil eyeliner and just draw one line on my upper lash line. That's it. Nothing else, no mascara, no base products, no concealer, no foundation, no blush, maybe a little Bonnie Bell chapstick, one line of white pencil liner on my upper lash line. I was cool. Actually, I wasn't cool, but in my mind I was cool. Now, granted, I did go to high school in the early 2000s, so it was like the it was the cool thing to do. I remember seeing like celebrities like Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears put doing their makeup like that. So, that was definitely like a very vivid memory of mine is wearing that white eyeliner. I'm going to take the NYX glitter primer for my lid. Those matte shadows were literally effortless to blend. <laughs> Absolutely effortless to blend. I'm going to take the shade Marvel right here and place that all over my lid. Like super creamy feeling. Oh yeah, that's gorgeous. Wow. The next question is, who was the first makeup YouTuber you remember watching? I've answered this in another tag video before. The first makeup YouTuber I specifically remember watching is Jordi from It's Likely Makeup. So I really didn't start watching YouTube until the end of 2016, I moved to Florida from Massachusetts and I moved here and I didn't really know anybody except I had one friend who lived here who I knew from college, her name is Gabby. And she was very much into makeup and into the YouTube makeup world. And she kind of opened up my eyes to it. I really didn't care that much about makeup prior to that. I had my little makeup bag of makeup that I used on a daily basis, but it was very bare bones. And so she kind of opened me up to the, the makeup world. And I do remember watching Jordi. I just thought she was so beautiful. I thought she was so talented. I was in awe of her and her makeup and what she could create. I was really, had never seen anything like it before. So she was the first person I remember watching. And soon after that, I started watching Jaclyn Hill. I do remember she was probably the second person I started watching. I'm gonna use the shade Spider as a liner. It's on an angled brush and just line my upper lash line with that. By the way, as I'm going through these questions, I wanna hear some of your answers. I will list the questions down in the description box. If you yourself are a content creator and you wanna do it, or if you're not, and you just wanna answer the questions in the comments, I would love to hear your answers. It's always nice taking a trip down memory lane. Okay, so the next question is, who was your first true makeup muse? And who is slash are your current makeup muses? So I think my first makeup muses were pop stars. I mean, back when I was in high school, college, after, you know, after college, we didn't have things like Instagram or, you know, YouTube, things like that weren't really existing in that time. And so the ways that I was discovering things was through magazines. And I used to read magazines a lot. And I was obsessed with Britney Spears <laughs> when I was in high school slash college. Like I had posters of her all over my walls. Uh, when I was growing up, when people would ask, what do you wanna be when you grow up? And you know, other kids would say a teacher or an astronaut. I always said, I wanna be a Britney Spears backup dancer. Truthfully. So I think a lot of my inspiration for my fashion and for my makeup you know, at that time was pop stars like Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, and also Ashley Simpson. I loved Ashley Simpson. I used to dress like her. Um, I was very much like in the emo scene and 
I loved her style. So I think that was really where it came from. And I think now my makeup muses are other creators. I find a lot of inspiration in other creators and what they're doing. And even ones that aren't like necessarily my style, I still seem to like learn something new from everybody that I watch or just kind of get a different perspective of things that I would never think to do those color combinations or I would never think to use something in a different way, that type of thing. So I really do get inspiration from everybody that I watch, even if it's not necessarily my style. And then I also kind of pull this may sound a little out there, but I also feel like I'm my own muse. Like I trust my own instincts. I do things that make me feel beautiful or if I'm feeling creative and I wanna try something out of the box, then I just do it without overthinking it. Like I feel like I used to be so like, oh, well this doesn't look good on me. And it's like, who cares? Who cares? So I kind of just try to go with my own instincts. What I'm feeling at the time, am I feeling neutrals? And that's great. It's okay if that's boring. Am I feeling colorful? That's great. Who cares if someone's gonna think I look like a clown? So I kind of just go with my own like thoughts and feelings of what's going on inside me. I hope that makes sense. The next question is, what was the first higher end makeup product you bought? So I, again, I specifically remember this. And when I was in like high school, college, that type of time, I was really strictly buying drugstore makeup uh, because I didn't have any money. That's the main reason. And drugstore makeup back then was horrible, like horrible. But we kind of didn't know better at the time because that's, that's kind of all I knew. I had never really bought high-end makeup at that point in my life. So when I graduated college and I got a job, um, I still didn't have a lot of money, but I was making my own money. So I was able to kind of splurge a little bit more. And I specifically remember out of college uh, to, and like I said, I had a little makeup bag. I had a handful of products that I would use on a daily basis. And I really wouldn't stray from those products. I had them for years, like literally not even repurchasing them. Like I had the actual things for years, like they were definitely expired but I specifically remember using the Chanel like tinted moisturizer. I'll pop it up on the screen if I can find it. I don't even know that they sell it anymore, but I loved that tinted moisturizer. It was actually really beautiful. Just like a light coverage, came in a squeezy tube. I would put some in my hands. I would just blend it on my face. I would put some Maybelline Fit Me Concealer on. And then the other high-end product that I loved, religiously used, was the Lancome Hypnos Waterproof Mascara. And that mascara was good. Like, I used to, probably why I don't have hardly any eyelashes anymore, I used to heat my eyelash curler up with the hairdryer. And when it was hot, I would curl my eyelashes and then I would pack on like six coats of this waterproof mascara. Now I specifically also remember I would have to scrub my eyes at the end of the night to get that mascara off because it was on there. And again, I think when I was 20 years old, I wasn't thinking about the future of ruining the skin around my eyes. I thought it would be tight and uh, creaseless forever. <laughs> well, now I know that's not true. But those were two high-end products I specifically remember using. Next question is, what was the first makeup purchase you waited for and bought the second it was released? So I remember this one specifically as well. It was the Jaclyn Hill and Morphe palette, the first one that came out in probably like 2017, I'm guessing was the year that it came out or 2018. Um, I was so excited to buy that palette. Okay, it was at a time where I really didn't have hardly, I think I maybe had four palettes, <laughs> but I was so excited. I had watched Jaclyn religiously and I was so hyped for the palette. Of course, if you were watching YouTube at that time, you know how hyped that palette was. It was like what you needed. And of course, at that time, you kind of look back compared to what's happening now and things weren't coming out at such a rapid rate. So when products were coming out, it was really exciting. You really didn't want to miss out. So 
I remember when they announced the date that they were going to release it, I was so disappointed because I was going to be going to the airport and where I live in Florida, I am an hour plus away from the nearest airport. And I live in a very rural area. So most of the time, if you're driving to the airport, you're going through the middle of nowhere and you really don't have internet service on your phone. So I remember being like, oh my goodness, am I gonna be able to get the pallet? What am I gonna do? My life is gonna end if I can't get my hands on this pallet. And so I remember specifically, at the time I was with my ex fiance and I made him, I was like, I don't care if you're gonna be at work, you need to stop what you're doing. You need to make sure that you are available because if I don't have ser cell service, you need to be uh, getting on that computer so that I can get this pallet. So lo and behold, I was on the shuttle to the airport and I was not able to get cell service, like internet service. And I called him freaking out. Oh my goodness, you need to get on, go on the computer and your phone at the same time, wait in line. And I would be calling him like every five minutes be like, okay, where are you in the queue? And it took him a really long time to get through. Like he had to wait in line, but I got it. Thankfully I got it, but I was really worried. I was really worried. Did you also go through that with the Jaclyn Hill palette? I would love to hear if you had. Okay. We're gonna take a pause from the questions and we're gonna use this new Patrick Ta palette. I'm so, so excited. Okay, now looking at it, I have the other one from last holiday. From last holiday, these shades are very bright. They're very pigmented. And the blushes, like the powder blushes are completely matte. Now looking at this one, obviously there's a highlighter. So the highlighter is shimmery, but these two blushes have a sheen to them. like. Looking at them, I can definitely see that they have, I don't wanna say glitter, but there is some kind of pearl in there. So I'm interested to use it. I have not even swatched this. Even the cream blushes have a little bit of a sparkle to them. Very interesting. Now, according to Patrick Ta, he is suggesting that you use the powder product first and then top it with the cream. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm thinking today I wanna go with this shade here in the middle. I would do one on each cheek, but I actually have to go out in public today, so I don't really wanna necessarily do that, but I'll swatch this one. But let's let's do this middle shade and it's called Giving Sun Kissed. So let me just put my angled brush in there and I'm gonna tap it off. Very pretty. Okay, so it definitely gives a lot of pigment, like you can build it up. But the first time I went in, I, I did not have a lot on the brush, so you can also sheer it out if you would want a little more of a sheerer application. That's a stunning color. Absolutely stunning, like a corally, warm, oh, stunning. Absolutely love it. So now when I'm looking at it, I don't see any glitter necessarily, but when I'm kind of moving my cheek back and forth, I do see a little bit of a sheen. So I like that. I don't love like a glittery blush. I am more of a matte blush person, but this I don't feel like is offensively glittery. I, I feel like it's very subtly sheeny. Yeah, I see it when I move my cheek back and forth, but it's nothing major. So by the way, this blush palette retails for $58 and they are saying it's limited edition. Now they also said that this was limited edition and I believe from last year, I believe that they did restock this once at Sephora, if I'm not mistaken, and then it was gone forever. The packaging on this is different. It's more of like a, not as shiny as you, I don't know if you can tell, it's more of like a brushed type of metal where this is like straight up shiny. So this is gonna probably be better for the fingerprint situation, which is nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna take that cream blush in that same shade. I don't have any clean brushes. A few moments later. Okay, this is clean. This is a NYX foundation brush, but I like to use it with my cream products. I'm gonna pop it into the cream blush side. Yeah, it definitely has like a golden sparkle to it, almost like NARS Orgasm, which I don't love that blush, but hopefully this is better. And I'm just gonna pat it out on the back of my hand first. Okay, it looks she pretty sheer. Like it looks pretty sheer. So, okay. So now let me just pop that on top, nice and light. Ooh, not that sheer, girl. There it is. That's really pretty. Ooh, <gasps> that's really pretty. Now, definitely a sheen to it. I normally 
I would wear this combo and not wear highlighter because I feel like this alone gives a really nice sheen to the cheeks. Really beautiful. But for the sake of it, we are going to try the highlighter side. Let me just swatch this other, this more pink one, which is Giving Glossy. So I'm gonna, ooh. And I, ooh. This like, you know, very cool toned pink, which is very in like that Dior blush. Yeah, the cream side looks really more on the sheer side. No, it can't be Giving Glossy. Giving Flirty, because the, the highlight must be called Giving Glossy. So the powder blush is on top and the cream blush is on the bottom. So the powder blush is very pigmented, as you can see. I'll use it in a future video on my face just to see what it looks like. But again, there is that little bit of sheen. Okay, so now let's try the highlighter. I'm gonna use the highlighter in the opposite way. This is more meant to be just like a glossy, balmy type of highlight, that's what I read. And then this is more of a powder, standard powder highlighter. So I'm gonna put the balm down first and then put the powder on top and let's see what that does. I'm gonna apply this with my fingers. Again, it looks like pretty much a clear gloss. There's not really any pigment that I can see to it, but let me just put this on the high points of my cheeks. Speaking of old makeup, I also remember when I was in college, I used to use Vaseline as a highlight. I specifically remember just putting Vaseline on the high points of my cheeks as a highlighter. Did anybody else do that? Yeah, so that really just gave a gloss, like a very slight amount of pigment, but not too much. It just mostly looks wet. Now I'm gonna take a highlighter brush. This one is from BH Cosmetics, but they don't sell it anymore. And I'm gonna dip into the powder highlighter. Let me swatch it first. I'm just curious like what it looks like. It's very pretty, but it's v it looks more on the sparkly side. If you don't like a sparkly highlight, I don't know how much you would like this, but let me put it on my face before I speak. Okay, so I'm picking it up. I'm gonna just kind of pat it because I have that gloss. Ooh, that's pretty. It's really pretty. It's really pretty. It's definitely more on like the sparkly side. I wouldn't say glittery, but it is not like a super smooth one, like the Natasha Denona My Dream. I'm loving that one. This one has a little more texture to it, but it is really pretty. It's a lot icier than I thought it was going to be, like looking at it in the pan, but really pretty. All right, we're gonna do the lower lash line and I'm gonna get back to the questions. There's a few more questions left. So the next question is, what was the first time you had your makeup done by someone else and did you like it? I specifically remember this too. I'm gonna take a tiny little brush. I'm gonna go in with that shade Spider over here and just push it close to my lash line. So like I said, I have been dancing forever and I did work at Fred Astaire, the franchise dance studio for many years. And when I worked there, uh, I worked in several studios in the Boston area and one of my coworkers at the time, she said, well, one of my students is doing a movie. He is funding a movie and there's a couple of dance scenes in it and he's looking for dancers. And I was like, yeah, count me in, like I'm ready. I thought this was my big break. I was going to be discovered. It was quite low budget, <laughs> a little more low budget than expected. <laughs> and little did I know I was being cast as like the mother. Uh, I was supposed to be more on the mature side. And this was, this was when I was in my like early twenties or whatever, mid, mid to early twenties. So I arrived on set and I had already done my makeup a little bit, but I was planning to get ready there. And lo and behold, he had hired makeup artists. But like I said, this was a low budget film and the budget for the makeup artists was low. Now at this point, I had been doing my makeup for competitions and stuff for a while. So I was familiar with how I liked my makeup, but he really was adamant about us having the makeup artists do our makeup. So I kind of just gave in and was like, okay, fine. Like what's the worst that can happen? I absolutely hated it. And I ended up going in the bathroom and kind of trying to fix the situation. I didn't end up wiping everything off completely, but I tried to salvage the situation as best I could. Um, and that was the last time. And that was probably about 10 years ago. That was the last time I had someone else do my makeup. I really, I really didn't, I didn't enjoy that process at all. I don't know, I feel like now because I'm just very picky about like how I want my makeup to look, 
I know what I like on me. I don't know, I'm just very specific about it. And even then, I guess I was too. When I get married next year, I am going to do my own makeup. I don't even want to hire someone else. Uh, hair, different story. I need help with my hair. I'm terrible with my hair. But with my makeup, I know what I want. I know what I like. And that's, that's that on that. Is anybody else like that? Are you like that? Or would you be open to having a makeup artist do your makeup? I don't know if I would do it again unless I knew that they were good. You know what I mean? I'm gonna use this cream gel liner from ColourPop in the shade Get Paid for my waterline. That matches the lid shade literally perfectly. I love it. The next question is, what's the makeup product you own that should be the first one thrown out into in a declutter, but you just can't do it? Ooh. I've mentioned this before, let me get it. I would say the Alyssa Edwards palette from Anastasia. Uh, if you had asked me this like six months ago, I would have said the Modern Renaissance from Anastasia, but I did. I did finally get rid of it after all these years. It was nasty. And for a long time, for the memories, I could not get rid of it. But this Alessa Edwards collab, I will never use these. I don't really love the quality of this one. And I don't really love the shades. I have used this a few times, but I really keep it around for the nostalgia aspect and because I love Alyssa Edwards so much, like I don't think I'll ever get rid of it, but I, I'm never gonna use it again. I just know it. I just know it, but I don't wanna get rid of it. I just line my lips with one of the Retro Paradise lip liners from e.l.f., which doesn't exist anymore. And then I am also going to put on Milani Pleasure. I'm gonna top it with AF94 Give Em Lip Lip Gloss in the shade Honey I'm Home. I'm gonna go off camera, I'm gonna put on lashes and I'm gonna do my brows and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna answer the last question and close out the video and give you my thoughts on the Patrick Ta blush palette. All right, I am back. I'm gonna pop in an inner corner highlight with the shade Web over here. I think that'll be perfect. I did put on some Ardell Demi Wispies while I was off camera. And this last question I like. It is, what is the first thing someone should know about makeup. I think the first thing someone should know about makeup, and I think about this a lot with people in my real life that aren't really into makeup, how much I wish that they could experience the joy that makeup can bring to your life. How much it can almost be like a therapy. I feel like when I sit down to do my makeup, it's me time. It's a time for me to express myself. I think of it like art. It's very calming, relaxing, and I just enjoy it so much fun and it brings me so much joy. I know that's kind of crazy because it's like, it's just makeup, but I think you understand. If you're watching this video and you love makeup, I think you get where I'm coming from, right? How much joy it can bring to your life. Not to take it too seriously, just to have fun and enjoy the experience and know that mistakes will happen and that's okay, it's just makeup, it can wash off. I wish everybody could experience the joy that I feel when I do my makeup. I think that's, that's what I wanna say. Okay, so that is it for this video. Um, I'm loving what I used. This palette, <laughs> um, very easy to use. Very, very easy to use. The shimmers are gorgeous. The mattes blended themselves. I mean, I've heard, I've heard that about this palette. I mean, everybody says that, so it's gorgeous. I'm so excited to continue to use this. The face palette, I kind of went away from the bright lights because with the bright lights, it's sometimes hard to see like what it's going to look like in dim lighting. And I will say this highlighter is very like boom, blingy, which is not usually my taste. I wonder what it would look like without the gloss underneath the powder, just doing the powder. I will have to do that and see, but like the combination, it's very blingy. So I'm very oily. So I don't love using like a cream highlighter in general. I feel like it's just a lot for my oily skin. The blush that I used, uh, gorgeous, stunning. The same formula in a way, but there is that sheen to it. So just be aware of that. It's not a matte cream or a matte powder blush. There's definitely some sparkle in there, but I don't feel like it looks sparkly. It just looks sheeny and really pretty. So I think this is nice if you have more dry skin and you want a glowy look, or if you just want a glowy look in general. Uh, I don't love how the packaging shows fingerprints, but that's okay. 
So yeah, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment down below, either answering any of the questions, any thoughts that you had on my answers or the products that I used today. I love hearing from you in the comments. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot when you do that. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to subscribe before you leave. I do upload videos weekly, both beauty and fashion videos, and I would love to see you back on my channel again. I wanna thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.